Now, the parents of a seriously ill 11-year-old girl are facing a court battle to keep custody of her because their local council says that they are obstructing her care in hospital. Well, Manu Driscoll has a rare genetic disorder called Rett syndrome and doctors want to wean her off some painkillers. But her parents say that she needs them and they've instructed the same sisters who represented the parents of Charlie Gard in their battle to prolong the life of their baby son. Melody's parents, Karina and Nigel Driscoll, join us this morning alongside Dr Hilary. Um, this is an, I mean, an agonising time for you as parents because Melody is very seriously ill, isn't she, in, in hospital. Yeah. How have you got into a conflict? We've seen this before with other families. Yeah. The doctors want the best for her and the best treatment for her, and obviously are expert in their treatment. You want the best for her. You want to see her not suffering. How then have you got to a position where you are in a fight, effectively, with those who, you know, who are trying to do exactly what you're trying to do? Um, they say that she doesn't need the pain relief, that they can manage it with other easier drugs. They say the morphine is affecting her liver. Um, so not just that there's an argument over whether she needs that pain relief, but actually yeah. by continuing the pain relief that she's on, yeah. it's causing her harm. That's what, that's what the that's doctors what are arguing. Yeah. What is your argument with that? That her liver is being damaged regardless of whether she's on pain relief anyway because of her TPN. She's fed intravenously through the main artery of her heart, so we have to bypass her whole, whole digestive tract. So that on its own causes liver failure in what the long do you term. If the morphine that she's being administered is withdrawn, mm -hmm. what do you feel will happen to Melody? We think we will lose her through shock of pain. Um, she's always struggled since she was three years old with chronic pain. And she, would, she was always very, very sick because of it, always internally bleeding because of it. So when they started the morphine, Great Ormond Street started the morphine and ketamine four years ago, mm. it gave her a quality of life. We decided at that point they couldn't cure her, they couldn't fix her, so we opted for quality of life over quantity because we didn't want her to suffer anymore. And as things stand, they, they may take your little girl into foster care because of this dispute. Are you prepared, as her father, to let prepared that happen? Prepared for a fight. We won't give up. We will keep fighting. Um, they can't do it. They can't do it. It, it comes back... I remember the Charlie Guard case very well. We, we had, uh, obviously, Charlie's parents on many times on the programme. And it's an agonising thing. You know, lots, lots of people at Great Ormond Street, they're the most wonderful hospital with the most wonderful staff. They've clearly made a, a measured medical decision, in their eyes, based mm -hmm. on many decades of experience. And they're saying to you, come on, you're the parents, and we understand how you feel, but, but we believe that we're right here. For the, for the benefit of your this child. This is actually London King's College yeah. Hospital. Yeah, yeah it's in, not Great Ormond Street. But you had treatment early on at Great Ormond Street, yeah. right? You're going against the medical advice. Are you sure you're right? Yeah, the doctors that have made this decision have only known Melody for five months. We've had her for 11 years. They say it's behaviour because she's nonverbal, because she can't talk and tell them she's in pain. They put in it down as she's being naughty when I she's do. not naughty. So she will cry and scream and draw her legs out and she looks at you as if to say, why aren't you helping me? She even grabs her morphine machine to tell you, I need help, I'm in pain. She'll pull out her tubes and her stomach. So it's, if it's behaviour, why would the pain relief work? Hilary, just bring you in. It, it, these are awful things, aren't they? Awful dilemmas. Yeah. Everybody involved, no one wins in these situations at all. But it does seem particularly cruel here that there might be a possibility that this little girl gets taken away from her parents, put into foster care because of a dispute over how she should be treated. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, we would want, in the best possible situation, the child to have 24-hour care, uh, which is, makes her safe and uh, looks after her every need in the, in the loving environment of, of parents and home. That's what you'd, you'd aim for in every case, and that's what the hospital want too. Now, here you've got a situation which is unpredictable because Rett syndrome can have different levels of severity. Some uh, people die quite young, some people live into old age, but during that, um, uh, that spectrum, you want them to have every possible care. Um, so you do, and the hospital does, and there's clearly a disconnect here, a failure of communication. So what needs to be decided is, 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 
Is Melody in pain? How much pain is she in? Is there any other way of dealing with it? Because morphine is a very powerful and addictive uh, painkiller, which does can it also long-term damaging effects, which is presumably what the it, even that's is quite asking. controversial because some research shows that liver damage only occurs when you've got viral hepatitis and people are using it, abusing it right. in, with intravenous uh, at use. So that there's less evidence that, that on its own it causes liver damage. But of course it's a very powerful drug, as are steroids. So you want to use the minimum dose of any powerful drug uh, with, to get maximum benefit without side effects. And that's always the aim. However, it's sometimes difficult. Morphine can do more harm than good. It can affect the liver, but it can also affect the gut uh, by, by constricting the movement of the gut, which has been a problem. Nigel, I mean, so it's it, difficult. It, uh, it is extraordinarily difficult, mm -hmm. obviously, case but I think it's just heartbreaking for everyone watching to imagine what it must be like for you not only are you in dispute with the doctors over how to best care for your child who you face losing but also that you face this battle now over whether she'll be taken into foster care I mean, how is this affecting you as as parents we're struggling we're struggling quite a lot um, the worst thing is with social services we've worked with them the whole time we actually asked for a social worker to mm. be involved to help us with the situation with the hospital <clears throat> um, and we've sent the videos of Melody in pain to the social worker um, and all the pain of where she's screaming out and everything and Pictures we, of get, internal and, bleeding. And we get told that there's nothing she can do because she's got to listen to the professionals. Well it does seem <clears throat> particularly heartless that they're even countenancing taking your child into, yeah. into care and I hope this common sense prevails yeah. here and we thank you for coming in yeah. and talking about this and wish you all the very best with your little girl so, with this yeah. uh, appalling situation.